Hello, my beautiful bookish friends. As I promised in my uh, March wrap up, not April wrap up, I am doing a book haul. I am well overdue for one. The first quarter of the year has finished and I have a stack of books. Even though technically I shouldn't because I gave myself a very strict book buying rules for this year. Let me break them down for you in case you've never seen my face before and didn't know that I was doing this. So as most people who are on BookTok, BookTube, love reading have, I have a very long list of books on my phone. They are numbered. Each of the books has a number, um, just one through, I think we're at like 298. I've under 300 now, woohoo. Um, but I told myself if I was going to buy books, I had to use a random number generator to pick my next book. And then I had to look at my library apps to determine if it was already on there, then I couldn't buy it, I had to move on to the next number. So most of the books in this stack, um, other than like book of the month and some random picks, are were randomly chosen. They're books that I wanted, but randomly chosen. Um, and then I couldn't buy books that weren't on the list unless it's book of the month um, because I don't really get a say in what books I have to choose from. I had to read 50 books, which I'm close, but I'm not there yet. Um, I had to finish a haul's worth of books from last year. So each haul video that I did, I made a different color on my spreadsheet. Um, I'm sure I sound insane, just people right now, but that's okay. I had to fill one whole color section before I could buy books. I'm close, but again, not there quite yet. Um, and I had to finish five series. Now I've finished two series, but two is not five last time I checked. So yeah, didn't really stick to the book buying ban. I am being more discerning about what books I'm buying, but for now, let's just talk about the books that I did get. So I actually went to Barnes & Noble today to get an autobiography. They didn't have it in store. So I'm waiting for that to come in. But what I did do is buy some other books. So here they are. First I bought, technically my mom bought these two because she is invested in this series. I haven't started it yet, but I will read it um, when she's done. It is the third and fourth book. I'm not sure which is which. Um, in the Naturals series. So we have All In and we have Bad Blood. I don't know anything about these except that she really liked the first books. I know nothing about where the series is at this point. I just know it's like Criminal Minds but make it YA with teen prodigies. Okay, that's what I know about that. Then I did, I did a bad. Um, so if you guys know, I've read the deal, the mistake, the score, which the score, I don't want to read it again, even though I already read it this year. Love Dean. Um, I got the rest of the books. Um, but if you know, I sold all three of mine to get money to purchase the new illustrated covers because I like them better. And I needed the legacy and the goal um, and I would not be able to get those covers that match the rest of the series if you, you know, you know. So when I went to Barnes & Noble today, I did not intend on getting this series. However, they not only had the whole series, but they had the whole series with the sprayed edges. So I got all of them. <laughs> I got the deal. This is the new cover. Again, probably this was my first hockey romance. This series is really, I've read one other hockey romance. This series is the only one that I adore and I'm not a hockey fan. So, um, but this one makes me want to read more hockey romance. So here's what the side looks like. It looks like a pennant and like, it's much more sporty. And then I just, I can't get over the covers. They're so cute. Um, then this is the mistake. So this is the second book. All the edges are sprayed the same color blue. Then we have 
the score. Um, Dean is the only blonde fictional man that I have ever been like book boyfriend. So that tells you how good this book is. He's blonde. And I'm like, yeah, that works. Never been done before. Uh, then I got the goal. So I haven't read this one yet. Um, but I know this is Tucker's. And it's Tucker and Sabrina. And they were in the last one. Um, and again, just the blue. And then the legacy is like everybody's together. Everybody's all happy. This is just kind of like the end of the era. But now the, I think it's a suspense romance. It's like the chase, the play, the dare. It's still by L. Kennedy and it all takes place at the same college. Um, those ones are getting illustrated covers like this now too. So that was more motivation to get these. So I did that. And then I got the next book in the um, Kings of Sin. This is book two with the purple spine by Anna Huang. This is Kai's story. Yeah, Kai is the British guy that they talk about in King of Wrath. And I believe, yeah, Isabella is the friend of Vivian from the first book. And they're the couple in this one. I've heard that Kai is even more like people are like he beats out Dante like he's completely underrated um but we'll see how I feel about that because I really did enjoy Dante Russo so I got this one so see we're just buying books or a continuing series I've already started it's not it's like I'm not buying anything at all uh then just get that little bag out of here I ended up getting an Amazon gift card randomly because I use Honey when I online shop and I had a bunch of points. So I got books with the gift card. I got The Blood That Binds Us. I know very little about this either. I think it's a romance, um, but there's vampires involved, which I've never really delved into vampire romance or anything like that. So we're going to give it a go. This is the first in the series and I've seen the other covers of the books and they're stunning, which is half the reason I bought this because I have an affinity for anatomical hearts. Obviously, if you guys have not seen this, I have an anatomical heart made out of like marine life on my arm. Um, so I love anything with this kind of look. I don't know, just something about like the vampires and the college and there's like, a bunch of suspense. I don't know. It sounds good. I'm, I'm gonna get into it. And I must have been on this kind of kick and maybe it was the right. I don't think the random numbers generated it. Maybe they did. Um, I did get Lake's Edge, which apparently is like, uh, Crimson Peak, I think is the movie with Tom Hiddleston. Um, so again, I think there's another pair. There's like a paranormal gothic horror element to this as well. Uh, and I think there's a romance involved in here too. So maybe I just got like paranormal romances. Uh, cause I also got Belladonna, which I think I'm really gonna like. And maybe my mom will like, um, the girl is orphan and she kind of finds out that death kind of follows her, but in a very specific way. So she's poisoned like Belladonna. I like the concept. So I picked it up. Other than the hockey romances and King of Pride, all of these have been purchased in March, by the way. And my March book of the month picks were Wayward. Uh, this is a witchy one. Uh, yeah, she inherited a shack from her great aunt. Um, and it takes us through from 1619 through World War II and then 2019. So it's kind of a multi-generational witch story, which I'm very interested in and it's not super long. And I also picked up Fate Inked in Blood. This is obviously a big old uh, fantasy and the character's name is Freya and you know, made and blessed by the gods. She's gonna fight. There's a kingdom involved. There's some sort of political aspect. This is just like your classic fantasy, like thick saga fantasy. And it says it's the first book in the saga of the unfated. 
So obviously going to be a series. I'm going to give that a shot. Uh, my mom picked up this one. She Whatever she buys at Barnes & Noble and she reads, she passes to me. Uh, so this one's called Sleepless. She said this one was weird. Uh, and I don't know what really happened. Oh, a child was convicted of a crime years later when she's finally released from prison. She's trying to start over. Uh, but there is... There's some things that happen that kind of shake up her life returning to normalcy with like her friend. So we'll see how that goes. From Pango, I did buy some books on there when they had like some of their giveaways and sales. I got the Foxglove King. Uh, this one is, oh, I didn't even know this was like all in here. There's like this cool stained glass window kind of map interesting um didn't even know that was there and there's like deckled edges on this as well this one I think is a romanticy pretty sure I know the hemlock queen is the second one yeah it's gilded gothic romantic new epic fantasy series so we'll try this I think again it's like a king and there's poison and a queen and you know there's gonna be a lot of romance and fighting and political intrigue which is kind of my favorite kind of romance like with from blood and ash there's a lot of that in there this one was actually recommended to me by my friend and now the light died again remember when i started this haul yesterday because i do but my light kept dying and now today it's light out so i'm just gonna use the natural sun that's coming in and do the rest of my book haul okay so the last book that I was talking about was Truth and Other Lies. This is a self-published book and it is a low-key retelling. I am pretty sure, yeah, like Loki is still the, go uh, the trickster god of Asgard. He's freed. I want to say it's a like mythological romanticy. Maybe not. Maybe there's not fantasy. I think there, or sorry, there's fantasy, but I don't know that there's romance. My friend recommended this to me and I ended up getting it on Pango for like a couple dollars. So I'm going to try it. And I think there's like six, three, there's like three to six books in this series now. Um, but I just wanted to expand my fantasy stuff because I really do enjoy uh, mythology and I don't have a lot of like Norse mythology retellings, even though that's something I'm interested in. So this is the Nine Worlds Rising series, and it's the first book. Then I got a book that's been on my list forever. Um, I did not realize it's like the mass market size when I bought it on Pango. So we'll see if that makes a difference. For me, it kind of does, just because I find this size kind of hard to hold. Um, but we'll see. This is Soulless. It is part of the Parasol Protectorate, I think is the name of the series. Um, I don't remember. There's like, yeah, the Parasol Protectorate. So it is a paranormal steampunk series. I think there are werewolves and vampires in this one. Uh, yeah, the main character is attacked by a vampire and then she accidentally kills one. And then there is a werewolf sent to investigate. So it's kind of like a paranormal mystery. It sounds fun. It sounds very fantastical. Um, I don't know if maybe like it's a cozy. And that's why it's like this. I don't know. It was hard for me to find this book. So if nothing else, I'm going to give it a shot. See if I like the rest of the series. Because I have etiquette and espionage. And I think it's set in the same universe. And I got another romance off Pango. I got A Merry Little Meat Cute. This is by Julie Murphy and Sierra Simone. I heard a lot about this obviously around Christmas time. Um, and I got it after Christmas. And this is about a plus size adult film star. Who ends up... I think she ends up going somewhere to make like a Christmas movie 
yeah, she has to go make like basically a, she gets asked to be in a like Hallmark Christmas movie, which is obviously very different than what she does. Um, and it kind of, I think she falls in love with like the main actor and it all takes place like in Vermont. So guy also like knows her work, like her other work. So, but he doesn't tell her that he knows like her other persona. So I think it'll be cute. I think it'll be spicy. I think it'll be whatever it is. Um, and yeah, I know it's a Christmas book, but who cares? Then probably my favorite book in this whole haul, because it was a gift from my friend Izzy, who is also a reader and is who recommends all my books that I buy when I say like my friend recommended it to me. It's all the same friend. Um, she so lovingly I sent her a TikTok about Tessa Bailey doing these like Valentine's Day gifts um, that you could pre-order and you would get fangirl down and they would be signed and it would come with a exclusive Valentine from a character in one of her other books and all this stuff. So the day this book came out, I actually had it in my hands. So I got fangirl down because Izzy is a gem. Um, and here is the little Valentine. It is the main character in My Killer Vacation, which I have not read. I do need to get that. Um, that's like the only Tessa Bailey from her more recent, like traditionally published stuff that I don't have. Um, but it is, I want to get to the page so you guys can see. It is personalized and signed to me. Um, and I posted about it on Instagram and Tessa Bailey liked it and stuff. So yes, I was so excited about this. I think it's such a fun little thing that she did. But it's also just amazing that I told my friend about this back in December and she just like did it straight away. So this is my fun little Valentine's Day present from her. Uh, but the book itself is a golf romance. This is like Tess Bailey started into the sports romance stuff. Um, and the Opera Affair comes out I think later this year and that's a hockey one. But this is golf. And people have been kind of like, I don't know, just like shitting on this book I guess is the best way to say it. Um... Because it has like a touch her and you die trope. But they're like how is that even possible in like a golf thing? Like it's golf. Like it's whatever. I don't think it's like fantasy like holding a sword to somebody. I'm thinking it's like a bar fight kind of situation. You know you can have you touch her you die in everyday life kind of stuff. So I think everyone just needs to calm down and embrace the fun. Like, and I think it's supposed to be, like, a grumpy sunshine, like, bad boy thing. And they're like, how can he be a bad boy if he plays golf? Who cares? Anyone can play golf. Um, anyway, I'm so excited about this. So, I will defend Tess Bailey till the day I die. Uh, then, one that I picked up that was on my random number-generated shopping trip is actually a middle grade. And it is The Curse of the Night Witch. It is a fantasy, and I think it's a duology. There's kids, they're in a village, something happens on New Year's Eve, there's a castle, there's a witch. It just seemed really fun. It's got, like, these spellbook-looking pages at points. Um, so, like, I think there's... Obviously, I'm thinking some sort of book is important in here, but it's just, like, a witchy read. So, I picked this up. It seemed cute, and I thought it would be a good, like quick read I'm not big on middle grade but I'm not against it either and I was just looking for something different and when that popped up I said sounds good I'll take it then one that my mom read um is local woman missing everybody's talked about this book she said it was very good um there's a lot that kind of happens the main thing and this is mentioned in the synopsis is uh some a lot of people started going missing and one woman went, like, one woman went missing, then another woman and her daughter went missing. But now that daughter, after 11 years, has turned back up. So they're trying to figure out what happened to her. She's not really sure. Um, but people are trying to keep her from telling everybody what really happened. So it sounds like a really good domestic thriller, very realistic um, in terms of, like, that's, like, how people would act. It'd be, like... I'm gonna, we're gonna barrage, uh, what? We're gonna send this person a barrage of questions when maybe we should just be like, hey, 
give them some time to figure out what the heck just happened to them because they were kidnapped. Uh, then I got When Sparks Fly by Helena Hunting. I have no books by her and I don't even really remember what this one is about. So give me just a second. Oh, it's a Friends to Lovers. That's why I got it. Uh, living her best life with her friends and her sisters and Spark House. Oh yeah, the family owns like this hotel that people rent out for big events a lot of the time. Uh, and she doesn't really want to have a relationship. She just wants to hang out with her roommate and best friend Declan um, instead of dating. And he avoids relationships too. And then blah, 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 blah. Everyone falls in love with each other. Sign me up. Say less, you know? So I got that one too. Uh, this one, I went on a book run for my mom. And I had never heard of this book, but... My mom said it was really fun um, in like a dark humor kind of way because that is my mom's humor. Uh, but it is How I'll Kill You. It is about a girl whose family are killers. Like her sisters are serial killers and she kind of cleans up after them. She's the one that kind of makes sure no one gets caught. Uh, but now people are starting to catch on. And they're in Arizona and she has to kind of make a man fall in love with her and then knock him off. So it sounds very fun. Someone said sneakily heart-wrenching. So there's definitely a twist in there. And someone also said it's very much like Dexter. So I've seen bits and pieces of Dexter. I know how the show ends. I know the general vibe. Uh, so I think I'll like this book because I was kind of interested in that show. Then I got another sports romance. I got The Fake Out. I know this is not the first one, but this is the book that came up first when I did my num random number generator. It's in the Vancouver Storm series. It is by Stephanie Archer. I believe it is a self-published. It is. My Barnes & Noble is just now getting all of these big self-published books that I've been big on TikTok for a long time. So I literally went in there the other day and there's a whole shelf cleared out and they're rearranging everything. So I think we're finally getting all, like all the books that people have been talking about, which is great um, because my Barnes and Noble, I really don't want to close. So I'm going there as often as I can because we don't really have indie bookstores in my city. So I gotta go there to get stuff. Um, but this is the second book in the series. And I know there is no third act breakup in this, which is part of the reason why I wanted it. Uh, yeah, but it's Hazel and Rory. And it's fake dating. So, sounds good to me. It's a little long. It's almost 400 pages. But sometimes I can live with that for a romance. Then I got another fantasy it is The Ones We Burn. This book is huge. I thought that I had accidentally gotten like the uh, like bigger print and I didn't. This is just how big this book is. And there's also like fun art in it. But The Ones We Burn is a witchy fantasy with an arranged marriage that no one wants to happen. And there's like lots of death. Someone said it's feral and tender all at once. And I'm like, you know, that sounds great. Innocent people start dying. The royal twins have to come to a temporary truce, even though they're fighting over the throne. There's bodies and blood. And I think there's like some representation in here. So I don't know. It sounds great. And I think, I don't know if it's a series or not, but it sounded good and very different to anything else that I have right now. Another thriller that I got, this is None Shall Sleep. This is a last girls kind of situation, or final girl situation, I mean. Yeah, two teenage serial killer survivors are recruited by the FBI to interview juvenile killers. So there's like a criminal minds aspect to it in here. There's a quick friendship. Uh, yeah, and then there is a killer who's actively targeting 
teenagers. They have to try and figure out who's doing this. And then they have to help, like, some sociopath murderer that kind of came after them. So it sounds very complex, very thrilling. I think this is one, the less that I know about it, the better. Um, so yeah, this one will probably make it to the top of the pile sooner than later. The other one my mom picked out and then passed to me was Good Girls Don't Die. This one she said I probably won't like, or if I do, um, it'll take me a while to get through. Because even though it's not very long, it did take her a while to get through it. This follows three different women. There's three different stories in here. So like every hundred pages is a different woman's story. But there's only one way out. They're all in these very like survival situations, but they're very different. I don't know. It sounds very interesting and very different. So I'll give it a shot. Uh, then I have a book of the month pick. I got The Heartless Hunter. This is in the Crimson Moth series. Don't know what it is, just know it's a romancy and it sounded good, so I picked it. I finally picked up One Last Stop by Casey McQuiston. Um, I still have not read Red, White, and Royal Blue, so <clears throat> we'll see if I like this one. Uh, but this is a queer, or maybe it's sapphic, it might be sapphic, uh, but it is like a time travel subway New York City story. And it sounds like a fun time. So... We'll give that one a go. Truth about the accident. This is a woman is in the hospital with her husband who is in some sort of accident, but she knows that he has done something really, really bad. Um, and that maybe it wasn't exactly an accident what happened to him. Then there is You Never Said Goodbye, which is someone's hunting for the truth but they might be hunted themselves something happened to them when they were a kid and then the skin collector this is by the same author who did the bone collector which i have never read i remember the movie a little bit uh, but this one is a killer who tattoos his victims as like his calling card so that sounded very creepy and weird and make me uncomfortable so maybe i will like that uh, but that is it. Those are all of the books I got between... Oh, wait. I have one more. So I went and grabbed it. And I picked out How to End a Love Story for this month. This is... There's two writers. And one of them is an author, TV writer. And they basically have to work together. And I think it's enemies to lovers. Or like second chance romance or something. I don't know. It sounded like my what would be my favorite out of all the options on there this month. So that is the last book that I've gotten from January 1st to today, April 4th. So I don't know how many books this was total. I'll put like some stuff up here, how many books I've gotten, how much I've spent, um, and that kind of stuff. But like I said, a lot of these either my mom got and just gave to me. My book of the month subscription is like a yearly gift that I get um, from my parents. So yeah, and Pango, I got a lot of these on. Uh, but yeah, so if you guys enjoyed this, let me know. And uh, yeah, hopefully I'll have a longer wrap up this month so I can get more books, yay. I probably won't get any once I reach even once I reach 50 books, just because I've gotten so many already. Um, and I'm trying to like cut the number of books or the amount of money I spent last year on books in half. So, and I'm still, I would say I'm like on track to do that. Uh, however, I don't want to get too many books because I'm running out of room and I'm overwhelmed. There's so many books I want, but I just need to like stick I must stay focused. However, there's so many and I want them all. Uh, but yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.